Okay, so today I'm going to construct the heptagon using only compass and square and uh, using the decrypted Da Vinci Vitruvian Man geometric construction box as the means to, to achieve this. It's supposed to be an impossible task. It's one of the ancient problems. It was supposedly proven to be impossible in the 19th century by uh, Gauss and Wantzell. Now, Gauss didn't actually write the proof, but Wantzell, who was a French mathematician, actually wrote the proof and he used Gauss as a co-author on it. But I'm going to show you how to do it with compass and square construction, defying their mathematical proof. So first we're gonna start, as always, with two lines, the symbology of those two lines are, of course, the vertical line and horizontal line representing, horizontal representing the earth, the vertical line representing heaven in an alchemical sense. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the Da Vinci construction box, which is here, and I've already marked the two locations where these line intersections are that I know um, are exactly the proportional ratio that we need. We got this line intersecting this line here, going across here, and this one intersecting this one. So the first one we're going to do is going to be with this right here, and this line is creating a circle right here. If I drew it all the way around, you would see it like this. And this is what we're gonna use as ratio value one. So this is our starting point. The second one, this requires a lot of precision. Is right here. So Da Vinci's construction box has given us this point and this point. So we're going to start with ratio one. So a simple circle. And then we're going to go to ratio two. go around the circle. You notice this one's the smaller circle. It's very important that each time it's meeting up with the prior circle to kind of see where that intersection is there. It's almost like it's guiding you towards where you need to be. See, just like that. Even the slightest variation, so even when your lead starts to dull, then you might have to either change the lead or sharpen it. Because those slight variations can actually make a pretty big difference. That is the heptagon. Now we're gonna, those are the lines for the heptagon. And we're gonna use our no measurement ruler to connect all the, to connect all these points.
that is a heptagon. Now, if I wanted to, I could connect these as well, but um, instead I'm just gonna give you a heptagram. So I'll go ahead and connect these points. smudge your page with your ruler it happens all the time you can just clean it a little brush and then you can use an eraser to kind of just wipe over it and pick up all that junk so why did Leonardo leave us this construction box Good question. I believe that all of the ancient, you know, he was never touting himself as a mathematician, interestingly. He never once referred to himself in that way, even though clearly he's probably the greatest mathematician of all time, based on what I've seen. Yeah, he never positioned himself in that way. Yeah, he solved all of the unsolvable problems they left it for us to find in our day. You can see there's already another heptagon inside here. And if I wanted, I could just hold this a little bit. You know, da Vinci also said, to achieve the complete mind, study the science of art. Study the art of science. realize that everything is connected. So I think that's the message he's trying to give us here. He's known as an artist. And quite frankly, we're now starting to realize even his biological work on the heart and the chambers of the heart are so advanced. It even beats some of the computer modeling that has been done today. He's being proven correct more and more, even though he did it in the late 15th century. It's just incredible. And maybe this is why this piece of art has been so enigmatic to us for so long. So as to be a mystery to everybody. What was it that he had encrypted inside of the Vitruvian man? And I could even still go even farther with this. I wanted to just invert another heptagon. Here. There's something very meditative about doing this type of thing, also. If you haven't tried it, I. Highly recommend it. There's something about drawing the geometry yourself. And the beauty of all of this is you don't need to depend or believe in what anyone else tells you. Everything here you can learn on your own. You don't have to believe me. Try it for yourself. It's the only way that we're able to know through our own experience 
through our own effort, we're able to find solutions to things that confound many, many people. You don't have to trust or believe in anybody else's word, including mine, so you can do it all on your own. And if there's one thing I can recommend to you, it's that. Learn all of these things on your own. I'm happy to provide a means or a guide, but it does not substitute you doing this work of your own volition, of your own effort.